A person described by police as a transient is a suspect in the ODOT Tech Center arson fire. I'm Dave Adams. I talk with Peter Murphy of ODOT about this. Well, we don't like the fact that it's a purposely set fire. It makes you wonder what motivates anybody who might do this. I guess there's some concern over that. Fear, sure, that's a good word. Nobody likes being the target of uh, an arson, for sure. What we hope is that the process moves forward and that we you know, identify the, the real person who did it. If we can do that and end up with someone convicted of the crime, uh, then that probably brings closure, which will help people here feel better about what happened. You, you feel like a victim. It's important to get past that and, and understand what happened and move on. We look for closure. We're not there yet. We move forward with this investigative process. You know, hopefully we will get some kind of closure and then move on. This person was staying at the Bethlehem Inn. According to the police report, he's been transported to the St. Charles Medical Center for mental health evaluation, currently at St. Charles. Yeah. There were multiple ignition points throughout the inside of the ODOT building. We had an idea, you know, as you would look at the building, you could see from the outside that it looked like there were multiple hot spots, um, you know, on the exterior of the building. So we had a pretty good idea that, you know, it was something beyond an ordinary fire which would start in one place, say with a, a coffee pot or something, and, and we knew that did not happen. To be victimized by someone who intentionally set a fire is, is just not a comfortable feeling at all. Um, I'm not sure I would identify him as a transient. As I understand it, he had, he had actually been in the area for a while. Um, we, he had actually had been, only been here for a few days at the end. Um, young man, obviously very disturbed. Uh, we recognized that when he came in here. We do a very rather extensive intake process. So we had identified him as somebody who had some serious issues, if you want to put it in terms like that. He had actually been re been released from a mental health uh, facility here in the community. And since he had no home, they sent him to us. So we had had him from Friday until Monday night when he was picked up by the police. You know, our staff identified as somebody, okay, we need to be concerned about this person because there were lots of issues with him. So at that point, uh, you know, we were on alert as far as he was concerned. Um, there was actually an issue on Monday morning. Uh, we had staff we had staff and residents on site on Monday because it was a holiday. Then the fire broke out. It was our staff members who actually called in the, um, the 911 for the building uh, almost immediately after it was started. And then we immediately identified Preston as a person of interest to the police. So within minutes of the police being on site, we said to them, here's this individual. We have all the documentation that you need. Here's photographs. Here is background information. This is maybe a person that you need to look into as far as this is concerned. This is going to engender or create some fear of the homeless and transients among residents in Bend. What would you say to those folks that have that just gut reaction, knee-jerk fear? You know, I think that you and I had something of the same conversation when there was the double murder that happened in the camp at the south end of town. The issue is is not that incidents like this happen because a person is homeless. It's because a person usually is mentally ill. Certainly, do I think that this individual would have taken some action to garner a attention for himself, because I think that's what this was. I think this was an act of someone saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. Would that have happened whether he was here or not? Probably, just given my little bit of knowledge I have of this individual. The fact that he had been, therefore, a resident at the end, and we had all kinds of information on that were immediately to point to the uh, police to say, this is a person of interest. I think that speaks volumes for having people not be loose in the community, but having a place where they can be, and, and people can keep their eyes on them and know who they are. And, and what's going on. So I would say to the public at large, if you can show me proof that only people in extremist circumstances like homelessness or transients or whatever are the only ones who commit crimes, then I'd be willing to entertain that argument. The fact that it happens across the board um, means that people, it's usually people who are in crisis at some point in their life or, or, or are having significant mental health issues um, or having significant problems in their lives, these kinds of actions take place. The question is, is whether we allow ourselves to say they just need to be out there in the community where no one knows who they are, or do we try to find some way of having people have a place to be, um, even in their most extreme circumstances. So I would say to any of the public, please do not be afraid of homeless people. They're no more, again, they're no more likely than anybody else to hurt anybody. And obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. Do you think there's anything that could have been done differently to keep this from happening? No, I don't really think so, because we were already on the track to sort of say to this individual, okay, we're, if you're going to be here, you're going to need to get some significant mental health issues dealt with. Monday was a holiday, but we had had plans to say to this individual, the Shoots County Mental Health will be on site this week. Uh, we need you to make sure that you make an appointment and you sit down and you talk with them. Chris Cluart of the Bethlehem Inn. I'm Dave Adams. Take 5 is a production of 1110 KBND Radio News. Depend on us.